He's caught over 810 pound largemouth bass, holder of 13 worldwide patents, and inventor of the wheelless trolling motor prop. Doug Hannon is the Bass Professor. Today on Retro Bassin, we are going to take a look at some of the contributions, some of the many contributions of Doug Hannon, the Bass Professor. Truly one of the innovators in bass fishing and an angler that most definitely swam against the current of conventional wisdom. Retro Bassin, kicking some ass and wearing rayon jackets. Thinking about Bill Dance, watching these fish prance through my Ray-Ban glasses. Ain't nothing better than 40-year-old lures coming off of Zepco 33. Out on the bass boat, making beer cans float, doing some trespassing. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassin'. If you grew up watching the Bass Masters on ESPN, you likely recall a segment called The Bass Professor, where locker hunter Doug Hannon would detail often little discussed aspects of bass fishing. His weekly segments covered everything from catching bass during seasonal transitions and fluctuating water conditions to the effects of barometric pressure, light conditions, and of course the moon phase on bass behavior. Doug was an expert diver and videographer, and his segments were often accompanied by dramatic underwater footage of lunker largemouth hiding in the shadows, waiting to pounce on unsuspecting bait fish. Each Saturday, the bass professor literally submerged the viewer in the world of the largemouth bass two and a half minutes at a time. While I always assumed the bass professor was a marine biologist, or at the very least, a lifelong largemouth bass enthusiast, I was surprised to learn that he actually never picked up a rod and reel until undergraduate at Tulane University. In his book, Hannon's Field Guide for Bass Fishing, co-author Horatio Carter tells the story of the first cast that would ignite a lifelong quest to unlock the secrets of the largemouth bass. I'm going to go ahead and read a segment from that book which I found rather intriguing. It all began when Doug visited his fiancée's parents' ranch in Wimberley, Texas, where the beautiful Gin Clear Blanco River flows through their 400 acres in a remote corner of the Texas Hill Country. On a day when there was nothing better to do, Lynn shoved Doug into an old 12-foot John boat, handed him a rod and reel, and said, let's go catch some bass. Not daring to offend the lady of his dreams, he accepted the invitation, and before the afternoon was over, had a pattern cut for the rest of his life. They caught a few bass that day, and Doug admitted that he was fascinated with bass fishing. Soon afterwards, Doug told Lynn, after we're married, we will move to Florida, find us a place to live on a lake, and then I'll learn everything there is to know about this fish. I intend to know every angle that anyone else knows, plus some. Everything that will help me understand this species well enough to catch them year-round and in every kind of weather. I'm going to make bass fishing the study of my life's work, he said. And so he did. But what shocked me most about this story is that the bass professor made his first ever cast in Wimberley, Texas, which is just about 12 miles down the road from this exact spot. The nickname The Bass Professor was coined by journalist Frank Sargent of the Tampa Tribune, who was more than impressed with Doug's fish catching abilities. During the 1980s, Han implied the shallow weedy waters around his adopted home state of Florida in a 16 foot aluminum John boat, compiling an impressive string of catches that included over 800 10-pound largemouth bass. To comprehend just how insane of an accomplishment that is, you could go out and catch one 10-pound bass every weekend for the next 15 years and not surpass Hannon's record. When he wasn't fishing, he was writing, and Hannon was a frequent contributor to Bassmaster Magazine and wrote a number of groundbreaking books on bass fishing strategy. In the upcoming episodes of this mini-series, we will look at the lost lessons of the Bass Professor. But today, we're going to start with the first ever lesson that I learned from Mr. Doug Hannon, and that is Hannon's Northwest Factor. In his 1984 book, Catch Bass, the rule simply states, the northwest area of the lake in the northern hemisphere is a center of fish life and spawning activity. This occurrence has to do with four different factors. The first is that the location is protected from seasonal northwest cold winds. Two, 
The southern angle of the sun provides more sun and less shade on the northern shore, thus increasing the water temperature by 3 degrees or more. 3. Added sun and warmth enhances plant life. And 4. Increased plant life provides a dark bottom condition, which absorbs more of the sun's energy. So if you're hitting the lake after a long winter's nap and are not sure where to start your quest, I'd recommend heading for the northwest corner. Next week in our Lost Lessons of the Bass Professor mini-series, we will take a closer look at the natural approach of the Bass Professor and why he thought it was so important to have everything from your boat to your hat camouflaged. In the meantime, if you're looking for some more old school content, click right here. Otherwise, I'll see you right back here, same time, same place. And until then, keep the carpet side up and definitely fish it old school. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassoon.